I'm gonna identify for you 12 weeds that I'm regularly seeing in the lawn and I'm gonna tell you the products that I'm using to control these weeds in the lawn without actually killing the grass. Let's get started. There's one that gives me a little bit of fits right here. Fix your drainage problem. Some of you are gonna wonder, is this actually a weed? Just because it's slow doesn't mean it's not working. All right, let me give you an easy one. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Yardbook. I've been using Yardbook for my lawn care software since 2015. Check them out at yardbook.com. Let's get started with the weeds. I wanna show you the weeds that I'm seeing in the lawn. And some of these you're gonna recognize and some of you are not gonna recognize. And I also wanna give you some general lawn care care knowledge about what we do to control weeds in the yard. I am a lawn care professional doing weed control and fertilization and I see these same weeds all the time. Now this one is one that gives me a little bit of fits right here and I'm hoping you can learn these weeds. This one's called field matter. Now it'll show a purple flower later in the spring but field matter, there's another example, is a tough weed in some ways because what happens when I uh, spray field matter, a lot of times when I'm spraying early in the year on this Bermuda grass and, and zoysia and other types of lawns, centipede thing I've seen, I deal with warm season grasses. But I'll spray a pre-emergent product like Prodiamine, something like that, and then I'll put in there a three-way product. I use this product called Triplet a lot, and then we put atrazine in the mix. Well, one of the weeds that doesn't get killed in that mixture is that one, field matter. So this year I'm actually mixing things up, and I'm going to go with change up in the mix as well as metzofuron. So I think the change up metzofuron uh, along with the prodiamine is gonna really do a great job on the, the same weeds I've been controlling, but also hopefully be able to knock out the fill matter, which is one of the weeds that again was not killed with the other mixture. And the good thing I like about change up is that it can be used on all these warm season grasses. So I'm gonna use it at a very low rate. Um, probably 12 ounces per acre, which is actually below the labeled rate, but I mix it with that metzofuron and it seems to do a good job of controlling the weeds. Now, what about this? Now, some of you are gonna wonder, is this actually a weed? Well, I believe this is ryegrass. So ryegrass for us in warm season grasses is basically a weed. So a weed by definition is an unwanted plant. In our warm season lawns, a piece of ryegrass like this, you can see, I mean, look at that. That sticks out like a sore thumb in a warm season lawn. So if you've got ryegrass, one of the best things to do in a warm season lawn is to spray it with a product called Katana. Now that's not the only product. Katana is K-A-T-A-N-A. -A. But there's a certain tribute total or other products you can use to control a grassy weed out of a warm season lawn. Even, honestly, in a Bermuda grass lawn like this, when it goes totally dormant, you can spray glyphosate on it to control some of these grassy weeds. And we'll talk about that later on a different weed. But Katana is a product I use sometimes when people actually overseed their lawn with ryegrass. And in the springtime, when I'm wanting the ryegrass to go away so the Bermuda can take off, then Katana is a product you can use to actually spray the whole yard to get rid of the ryegrass and let that Bermuda start filling back in. All right, what about this one? I see this weed a good bit in our area. It's kind of flat. This is called annual blue-eyed grass. Now, my understanding is it's actually not a grass, it's a broadleaf weed. So why do they call stuff? It's, it reminds me of like broom sedge. Broom sedge is, is not technically a sedge, but they call it broom sedge. Annual blue-eyed grass right here. So I, I'm assuming Again, when I'm going to be spraying that change up metzofuron mixture, uh, I, I'm almost positive it'll kill this, but you, just use your broadleaf herbicides on this. Again, we often categorize weeds as your grassy weeds, broadleaf weeds, and then you got your sedges. And there's products, there's some products that'll kind of control all three of those, like a tribute toll or something like that. But others, are, the broadleafs are typically the easiest ones to control. That's probably actually a better example of your annual blue-eyed grass. So you see that. These are mostly gonna be cool season weeds that I'm showing you today and giving you some idea on how to control these. So uh, with your cool season weeds, remember, if I would have sprayed a fall pre and post-emergent in this area before these weeds germinated, that, that pre-emergent hopefully would control a lot of these weeds when you wouldn't have seen them in the lawn. Now, some of these weeds may be perennials and be hanging around in the lawn, but that's why we oftentimes will mix the pre and the post-emergents together to better control 
the weeds. All right, let me give you an easy one, clover. And clover is one of those that, you know, really I believe hangs around year round, but in the summertime, it doesn't like the heat, so it's maybe not nearly as noticeable. When we get these cooler weather, then uh, the clover starts perking back up. So again, that, that same combination, and I'm talking about change up and metzel furon. It's not like those are the only two products you can use. There's a lot of products that you can use to control weeds. But that just happens to be a combination I really like. If I were to spray that with the atrazine and triplet, it would definitely control that as well. When I use the atrazine and triplet, it just seems like uh, it does occasionally miss some of the weeds in lawns, particularly the fill matter, which we looked at in oxalis, which I hope to show you later in this video. The next weed I wanna show you, I believe this is called dichondra. I get dichondra mixed up sometimes with pennywort. Dichondra, uh, D-I-C-H-O-N-D-R-A. And I believe that's what this is. And these are tough weeds to kill. So I'm going to actually ask the audience to leave a comment if you know of a product that'll to knock out dichondra. A lot of times these tough weeds, I, I'll put wild violet in this category, Sometimes our quinclorac products will knock that out. So I use product like Solitaire, like Q-Ball or Drive Accelerate that has quinclorac in it, which is often considered a, a post-emergent product we use a lot on crabgrass, but it also can work on some of these tough weeds. I don't know particularly if it, it works on that weed. I would need to check the label or, or just try it out. Um, but that would be one product that I would consider using on that weed. Again, if somebody has a suggestion, please leave it in the comments. If you're in the lawn business, I also wanna mention, I just hired a company called Lightspeed Social Agency. So these guys, I'll put a link in the description for them. These guys do digital ads. So if you're looking to target, they work with lawn, local lawn care businesses and they're targeting small communities with Facebook ads, Google ads, things like that to try to help you grow your business. So if you want a company to help you run ads to try to really grow your business, I personally think this is a better strategy than direct mail and other things. So you can uh, check out these guys. I've just hired them to work with me actually on the YouTube side. So they're gonna be running ads for me. So if some of the courses and products I sell over at LawnCareLife.com, uh, it's been great to work with so far. The guy that runs his name, Cody. So I'll put a link for those guys in the description as well. All right, six weed we're gonna show you today is called Dallas grass. Dallas grass is a perennial weed. So your pre-emergent's not gonna help you much on it. There's a few things you can do for Dallas grass. One, in a Bermuda lawn, you can actually spray it with glyphosate like we mentioned. Uh, in when the Bermuda is dormant. So you do that, I'll usually put like two ounces in a gallon of water, or if I'm blanking in the yard, uh, you would use uh, 32 ounces per acre is what I've typically used. But you can also use products like Tribute Total or Manuscript, or I'll mix Celsius and Certainty together, and I'll spray Dallas grass, and I'll do it in the, in the fall, like October and again in November, then I might hit it with glyphosate in the winter, and then come back uh, in the spring, if it's still alive, I might hit it with more Celsius and certain. So it's really tough weed control, but those are some options for you for controlling Dallas grass in the lawn. All right, the seventh weed I wanna show you, and I believe this is a type of rush. I'm not exactly uh, all that familiar with these, and somebody can give me some information, but what I do know is they like wet areas. So one of the solutions to controlling the rush, if you have this type of weed in your lawn, is to fix your drainage problem. I've got one particular yard that was just loaded with this and I actually uh, have, have used change up. I've used glyphosate in the winter time. Um, but again, it, it ultimately is probably related to a drainage problem in your lawn. So I just want to show you one a little bit different that I don't typically show in these type of videos. The eighth weed I want to mention to you here, it's called cudweed. That's probably a little bit better example of the cudweed there. So again, another broadleaf weed, same price you can use on it. Just understand when you control cud weed, it is a little bit slow to die. So don't expect uh, it's just gonna curl up and die overnight. And one thing I wanna mention on that note, a lot of times the weather plays a role in that. So if you're spraying these weeds in January and it's really cold, it's gonna probably be pretty slow. Where the same product you might could spray in April and that weed might actually be wilted the very next day and in three days it's crunchy brown. So understand the weather plays a big uh, role in this, but it doesn't mean it's not working, okay? And some products are obviously gonna be a lot slower 
slower than others. Changeup typically is a fast product. Actually, it's a fairly slow product. So just because it's slow doesn't mean it's not working. And that's definitely the place too uh, when it comes to Dallas grass in the wintertime. And when you spray it with the glyphosate even, it's not gonna die in two days like it might in the summertime. Problem is the summer, everything's green around it and you burn a hole in your grass and it takes time for that to fill back in. But in the winter, it's gonna be much, much slower to die. All right, now some of these, I, I wish I had a good example, of just a, a dandelion with a big yellow flower, but dandelions are one that can be a little slow to die. And I think if I'm correct on dandelion, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's actually called a, a biennial, meaning it's not a perennial and it's not annual but it, it, a biennial maybe a two-year lifespan so uh somebody in, comment on that if you want to also you got like false dandelions and dandelions you know it's a you, when you do weed identification and especially if you're in the lawn care business you don't have to know in, in my opinion every exact species i mean i see sedges and you got all these different varieties of kalinga and i got yellow nut sedge purple nut sedge and i can tell some of them apart and i try to help you guys on these videos but i'll just be honest i don't know the names of all the different species of weeds but i know a lot of them i know a lot of the ones i see coming in the yard and ultimately knowing how to control the weeds is what interests me the most the tenth weed i want to show you today is called poa annua p-o-a-a-n-n-u-a -N -N and you see this we just call it poa and it's a little cool season grassy weed. It's tough to control. This is the probably the weed that most responsible for me using Spectacle Flow in the fall. Spectacle does a great job of controlling POA. And we'll put uh, a product called Princept in there with it, which is Simazine. And the Simazine mixed with Spectacle does a great job of controlling POA. Now, if you get POA, let me pull a bit up and show it to you. If you get POA, and you want to for post-emergent options there's a lot of them out there in our warm season grasses now good luck with them the cool season grasses because a lot of the products we're using to control this in the warm season lawn would also damage your cool season turf but even uh, katana revolver negate uh, celsius certainty tribute total they're all going to have some effectiveness on poa annua and it's controlling it from a post-emergent standpoint but it, it can uh, really be tough to control if you have a, a thin Bermuda yard it's kind of in a shaded area or on a slope then you're probably going to have a, a bigger issue with poa annua. The 11th weed I want to show you is this little guy right here this is called chickweed you're going to see it a lot in cool season weed and um, and we're in a, a stage where these weeds are fairly young in their life cycle so they're fairly small uh, as we move on are approaching closer to spring these things are going to get bigger and more mature and going to honestly be a little bit easier to identify um, but again another cool season broadleaf weed that we can use to control with a pre-emergent in the fall or some of these same post-emergent herbicides in the spring or some of these same post-emergent herbicides uh, once you see the weeds in the lawn and the last weed i want to show you and it's one i've been walking on the whole time just about and that's this weed it's actually this part that you can see here let me show you from a distance you see over here this is what bermuda grass looks like when it's dormant and what's this over here this is actually bahia grass almost all of it's bahia i don't like bahia grass i know some people make a lawn out of it but bahia grass what i would use is metsulfuron and even at a quarter ounce per acre which is a very very low rate it will suppress bahia grass you might could uh, come in here and spray this if you really wanted to get this Bermuda grass to fill in and spread. I think what I would do is spray this with glyphosate in the wintertime like now. Because you see it's still got a lot of green in it where the Bermuda is mostly dormant. And I might wait just a little bit longer for the Bermuda to go totally dormant and on a fairly warm day spray this with glyphosate. But again you can suppress it with metsulfuron at a very low rate and then you can either sod this area obviously but this Bermuda if you just take plugs I use this tool called a pro plugger that's pretty cool and you can take plugs from this and plug over into this area and that bermuda will really take off now it's going to have a hard time taking off because it's having to compete with the bahia grass so if you can control the bahia give the bermuda room to run fertilize it i think that bermuda would make a whole lot of progress filling in this area just in one summer that would be a lot cheaper than sodding Siding obviously would be the quick fix. I'm Jason Creel. Appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you learned something. Let me hear from you in the comments. I've got a lot of training courses over at LawnCareLife.com. One of the most popular is the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. 
which uh, has a lot of training as far as how to deal with warm season grasses. If you want to start a weed control and fertilization business and you need help knowing what to spray on the lawns, a program, I've got the dynamic pricing charts, which are also included in there. It's got letters, documents. It's a lot of things I accumulated and have used in my own business, bundled all together with a lot of training videos not found on YouTube. So to me, it's honestly the best thing I know to offer somebody that's looking to get into weed control and fertilization, the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. There's a lot of other things. The pricing chart's 39 bucks. You want a pricing chart. Anyway, you can check those out, lawncarelife.com. Or there's some more recommended videos about to pop up for you now. We'll see you in the next video.